It's not hard to find people who laugh at astrology, but the advent of the coronavirus pandemic actually stands as a testament to a greater understanding of how the cycles of our universe work. In this video, you're going to discover how COVID-19 is actually a part of a much bigger picture by looking at the cosmic cycles that circles above and beyond our heads. Even if you think astrology is hogwash, please watch on and see if your understanding changes by the end. In astrology, there's something called a conjunction, which is any time that two planets line up with each other in the sky, which is said to strengthen the energies of the two. Along with normal conjunctions, there are also great conjunctions, which happen between the outer planets, Jupiter and beyond. 2020 is a year of several great conjunctions. And today I'd like to discuss one in particular, Jupiter-Pluto, which is what's happening right now. Jupiter by its nature is said to bring expansiveness and Pluto brings about transformative change, death and rebirth. And also it makes big things small and small things big. Curiously, when we look at the history of Pluto-Jupiter conjunctions, we see this recurring theme of extreme magnification. I'm going to take you through a few key dates and time to show you what I mean. Just so you know, every single date we discuss aligns with a Pluto-Jupiter conjunction. And really quick, before I begin, I just wanna thank Patrick Watson and the Astro Twins for their work in compiling this information. Okay, here we go. In 1571, Johannes Kepler was born, a man who devoted his life to the stars and whose insights would profoundly broaden humanity's views of the skies. Though it's interesting because even though today he's considered a revolutionary scientist, to Kepler, astrology and astronomy were completely interweaved as one unified system. In 1596, Kepler published the Mysterium Cosmographicum. And in 1608, he wrote Somnium and invented the Keplerian telescope. And in 1620, Kepler completed his three laws of planetary motion the work that would be tremendously influential for modern astronomy and work that even inspired Isaac Newton to build off of when scientifically describing motion and gravitation. Now, while all of this was happening, in 1590, we see a Jupiter-Pluto opposition where they are across from each other in the sky. And we have the invention of the compound microscope and the first telescope, although the first patent wasn't filed until a bit later. Continuing in this, in 1623, Antony van Leeuwenhoek the father of microscopy was born. And like Kepler, his scientific method was bound hand in hand with his spiritual faith. He became the first person to observe microscopic life in 1657, another Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. In 1663, Robert Hooke popularized microscopic images. In 1838, scientists Schleiden and Schwann formulated cell theory, the idea that all living organisms are composed of cells, a basic unit of life. In 1630, we saw the invention of the electron microscope. In 1894, we saw the birth of Lemaitre, the man who invented the Big Bang Theory, the idea that everything in existence came from an infinitely small primeval atom, which he proposed in 1930, during another conjunction. Oh, this is a fun one. In 1894, the Lowell Observatory opened. In 1906, Clyde Tombaugh was born. And in 1930, Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory. Ha! In 1968, we saw the moon landing and the dawn of space telescopes. In 1981, the Hubble telescope began construction. And in 1994, the Hubble telescope produced the first images of cosmic marvels, including the famous pillars of creation. And fairly recently, in 2007, we saw that the New Horizons probe got a gravity assist from Jupiter on the way to Pluto, literally the most meta transit imaginable. So with all of this in mind, if we look at the pandemics of history, we also see that many of them line up with a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. In 1918, the flu pandemic happened while Jupiter and Pluto were in Cancer. In 1981, the HIV outbreak happened while Jupiter and Pluto were in Libra. The Russian plague of 1771 took place while Jupiter and Pluto were in Capricorn. And the Black Death of the 14th century happened when Jupiter and Pluto were in Aries. And with all of this awareness, it actually starts to make sense that we're experiencing the coronavirus pandemic during a Jupiter-Pluto transit. But what do all of these alignments mean? Do the planets rule our existence? Are we forever subject to the wheels of karmic fate from beyond our world? Well, no, not really. You see, astrology is a language. Much like we use English and Spanish or other languages to communicate with people, 
Astrology is one of many languages that we can use to communicate with and understand the workings of the cosmos. These conjunctions simply describe energetic alignments, which means that by understanding and reading the language, we can begin to make deeper connections with the subtle forces that move through all of life on Earth. We should consider this particular conjunction to be especially special because it's not just Jupiter, Saturn is also in the mix, which energetically is considered a force of responsibility, systems, restriction, learning lessons, maturity, banishing old aspects of life no longer needed, and more. One of the great lessons that these planets bring is the transformation of our systems, which include our financial systems and the ways that society connects together and with the world. And so each of us are invited to ask ourselves what it is we might be holding on to and practice letting go in order to make room for something much more amazing. It's as if to say that the subtle energy of this time in life is in extreme magnification mode, making everything bigger and paired with some responsibility and maturity. But depending on where we're at as a species will really determine what emerges from that potential energy. If humanity was in a different state of consciousness, then perhaps this energy would have found its expression in a different way. Who knows, maybe we would have learned how to send people into the quantum realm, or maybe we discover a black hole near Saturn and send some people there to try and find a new home. Wait, these ideas sound familiar. Anyway, the point of all of this is to see the nature of cycles. Today, we can look out into the world and see a lot of chaos, a lot of fear, a lot of people fighting each other for toilet paper, certainly. But if we stop for a moment and look beyond, listen to the language of the cosmos and learn from it, we actually open ourselves up to discovering some pretty profound truths about the bigger picture of what's going on. The collective experience of COVID-19 is a wake-up call, an opportunity for us to realize that we are living with these greater cycles and movements of celestial forces. And these forces are how we learn to interact with the universe on greater levels. And that if we can make sense of those, we can really prepare well for the other changes that are to come. Remember, 2020 has several great conjunctions and this is only the beginning. And the changes that are initiated through this period of time will last long into the future, forever shaping humanity into a more vibrant species than ever before. If only we can learn the lessons that we're here to learn. So now, how can we take all of this information, this awareness and make it practical? First, I think it's important that we allow ourselves to relax a bit especially if we're feeling anxious from the collective fear that is raised over the coronavirus pandemic. By seeing that this isn't unprecedented or out of nowhere, but the closure and reopening of a cosmic cycle that is here to teach us lessons, it gives us the space to breathe. Shifting our mindset from doom and gloom to opportunities to learn and grow is one of the best things we can do for ourselves. Second, considering this is a time of magnification, now is a great time to zoom into our own lives or the world around us and learn. So many of us are quarantined at home right now, living in isolation. And yet so many of us have the whole world at our fingertips through our computers. Use the opportunity to learn, to grow, and to evolve your awareness. Learn something new, a new language, a new topic, a new meditation, whatever it is, just learn something new. We must acknowledge that we are the creators of our reality. And collectively, we are the ones who have to deal with the pandemic at hand. The truth is, this is the first global event in a long time that acts as a unifying point in history as the world sets its focus on the same issue and not in conflict with each other, but against a force that's hard to quantify. This is like a very low impact version of something like a great flood, some narrative that universally affects everyone's lives at the same time. While everyone's attention is focused together, there is a fantastic opportunity to spread love and compassion for each other and the whole world. And if you're someone who really wants to dive into the deep end, I'd like to offer you a download of the new Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, the Aquarian edition. This is a new modern edition of the Emerald Tablets, which I was guided to produce after a visionary experience with Thoth himself. And today you can get this free download on the Spirit Mysteries website. Enjoy. Enjoy.